Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about the Delphi case. I know I've been talking a lot about the University of Idaho murders, and that was really um, like a hot topic going on, and that's why I did so many videos on that. And I do have more coming of talking about that, but I just got done making a video about the arrest of the University of Idaho murder suspect. So I also wanted to continue and make a video on the Delphi case because I never talked about the probable cause affidavit that came out on uh, Richard Allen. And after he got arrested, I didn't say much about the case anymore. But the reason I've been wanting to talk about it is I read the affidavit. And I was really surprised by a lot of what I read because I used to watch Anthony Greeno, True Crime Investigates. And he lived near Delphi, and I took a lot of what he said as fact. But when I read the affidavit, several things that Anthony said were not even in the affidavit. So I guess that can kind of prove to all of us to not um, like 100% believe true crime YouTubers. They don't always know everything. And they also make stuff up to get views. Now, I, my channel, I feel a little different. I kind of just always let you know that these are theories and my opinions. I never state anything, like, as a fact unless I have a news source or something. But, so I was surprised in the affidavit because there were two witnesses and they weren't the two witnesses that Anthony Greeno always said. So the witnesses were a juvenile and her friends saw Richard Allen walking towards the trails. And she said she remembered him because she said hi to him and he kind of scowled at her and didn't say hi back. So she remembered him. So she was one of the witnesses. Now, in his, def not that we want to defend a murderer, but a grown man probably doesn't want to say hi to, you know, like a 12 year old these days. It's just kind of taboo. So I don't really blame him for not saying hi to her. But needless to say, that put an impression on her and made her remember him. And then the other witness was actually there for her exercise that day. And the end of her walk is at the bridge because she doesn't walk over the bridge. So while she was standing, looking at the bridge, getting ready to turn around to finish her walk, she saw Anth or Anthony, oh boy, she saw Richard Allen and he was on the bridge and he was standing on one of the platforms off to the side. And she just like saw him. She didn't think anything of it. She thought he was just another walker. And so she turned around and headed back towards her car using the trail. And she crossed paths with Libby and Abby headed towards that bridge that that man was on. So those were the two witnesses. And after the murders, police talked to everyone that was at the bridge and trails that day, including Richard Allen. So Richard Allen said he didn't remember seeing the girls because he was looking at his phone for the stock market um, ticker. So to me, that would have been an immediate red flag that everyone involved remembers seeing each other because he even said he remembered the juvenile girls, the ones that said he didn't say hi. 
but he don't remember the ones that were murdered. Oh, how convenient, you know? So I think that should have been a red flag to investigators. And the fact that they're looking for a murderer who is most likely a man and the only man that was there in that time frame acted like he didn't see the girls. So the other evidence was that a unspent shell casing from one of Richard Allen's guns was found at the murder scene. So they're not saying whether the girls were shot or stabbed, but regardless, one of the bullets from his gun was found at the crime scene. So that places him there. He admitted that he had that gun and ultimately that is how they've arrested him because they did a search warrant for his house and got that gun but that was just in the last four months they did this they didn't do it right after the murders so all they had on him right after the murders was that he was the only man walking the trails during that time but they chose not to look into him enough with this gun and shell casings i don't get that i don't understand why they didn't do the search warrant right after the murders why did they wait um you know like five years to do the search warrant and get the probable cause affidavit i feel like you know a lot of my information like i said was with i am anthony greeno it was with other true crime youtubers and we were all trying to figure out what happened to these girls and it ends up like if we would have had the evidence that the police and investigators had don't you think we all could have solved this five years ago but it was like they were protecting him he he was being protected because they didn't even give us all the information so i almost feel like with any case you know i know we don't get all the information but why have press conferences where you're like begging for tips and wanting people to call in and then giving a sketch of someone that looks totally different when you all along had the guy you had his name everything so i'm kind of disappointed in how that case was handled because i feel like any one of us could have solved that case five years ago had we known the facts but you know i don't know maybe they're trying to build the case i'm not sure but I just wanted to give my two cents on the whole Delphi case um, affidavit that had come out on Richard Allen. So subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile.